Hello again, everybody. It's Scott Casper, Takedown Wrestling. Nike Hot Seat special guest today is a young man, Jake Suflana. Jake, you remember him as a wrestler for the University of Nebraska. He joins us now from West Lafayette, Indiana, the home of the Purdue Boilermakers. Jake, how are you? I'm doing well. How about you, Scott? Well, good, man. Uh, uh, you ready to jump into the Nike hot seat? Uh, I believe so. You are ready. All right. Well, Purdue's head coach, Tony Erslin, recently made the announcement that they're adding you as a volunteer assistant to the staff at Purdue. Uh, first of all, congratulations. Thank you. Now, is, was Tony instrumental in getting you to Nebraska? Where was he at in the recruiting process with, uh, with you at Nebraska? Uh, he was the one who, who first, for first uh, broke contact with me, and so him and I started talking at first, but uh, eventually I started talking to all the coaches, and I loved them all, and that's why I went there. Now, I know Tony Erzlin very well, and I've known him since he was a competitor, and uh, then his, his career in coaching as well. What was it about Tony that, that clicked with you? I was, I was talking about here at Purdue or Nebraska or, or overall the first time you met him the first contact what cl what clicked uh you know just seemed like a really good down-to-earth family guy uh someone who I, I agreed with a lot and so um it, it it was pretty simple to to buy into what he was teaching so staying in the Big Ten now you're going to be on the coaching staff or are on the coaching staff for, for, at Purdue uh you were a four-time NCAA qualifier easy enough right a four-time Big Ten Championships place winner for the Huskers. It's not, um, it's not easy to, to be that guy, and yet to coach it, is it, is it as difficult? And maybe I'm backing into the question. I'm, I'm saying, is it, how do you see teaching uh, the sport of wrestling to young athletes? I mean, they're coming in already highly regarded, right? Yep. So how is it to teach uh, something like becoming a four-time NCAA qualifier, all that you've accomplished? Uh, I mean, it. I'd say it's more difficult getting into it um, because, you know, as a competitor, uh, you see things differently than a coach. Um, and so it's kind of just like easing into it. I got I to gotta learn, learn the ropes. I know how to wrestle, but um, teaching someone else how to do things the right way is, it's not going to be hard, but it's going to be different. And so, uh, you know, I'm embracing that and, and trying to grow as fast as I can. So basically, it's like trying to put the shoe on the other foot. And and that's what, and Tony said it best, he said, Jake Suflon is the kind of guy that we need to grow the program. And to continue to grow the program, we need to add uh, grinders. He calls you a grinder, dude. <laughs> and I don't disagree with that description. How does that make you feel? Uh, I'm, I'm proud of it. Uh, I know I'm not the most athletically uh, gifted person, and so... You know, I got to do with what I what I have, and so uh, I just I like to wrestle hard. When wrestling in Nebraska, you went one hundred nine and thirty two, um, and I think you wrestled all all seasons at one forty nine. Is that right, or except one? Uh, I wrestled my first season at one forty one. At one forty one, then the balance at one forty nine. Where are you at today? <laughs> uh, uh, upper seventies. Really? Yes. Wow. Does that tell you what? Uh, was 149 a hard cut? Uh, I mean, it was it was difficult, but I managed it pretty well. Jake Suflan, our guest, and I don't remember 149. I really don't. Perhaps it was sixth grade. I'm not sure. <laughs> but uh, anyway, you were twice the Huskers team leader in major decisions, which uh, kind of goes to uh, you know compound the idea that you are a grinder. Uh, that's the kind of guy that, that I want to see wrestle because a major decision means you're, you're working hard. There's no, it's not a, it's not a two, one or a three, two decision. Uh, a major decision is a big deal to me because what's next after that? Well, pins and, uh, take down. I love takedowns. Do you like takedowns? I love takedowns. I love takedowns. And I, I was hoping you'd say that, um, when you, as a, as a young wrestler, how old were you when you started? Uh, I was four years old. Four years old. Yeah. And did you immediately find it fun, or was it challenging and fun, or what was it like for you as a four-year-old? Uh, well, I, I really can't remember much of it, so um, I'm sure it was difficult at first, uh, but I, I love the sport. Um, 
probably towards uh, end of middle school, beginning of high school is when it like really became my sport, and I loved it. And uh, I feel that's when it really started taking off. Where does a competitor drive for you come from? Is there a member of your family? Are you following suit? Uh, who 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 really uh, you know stirred those competitive fires? I feel like I've always been a competitive person, but I come from a wrestling family. My dad wrestled, his brothers wrestled, and then the, his dad on top of that wrestled as well. So uh, I come from a wrestling family, and I've always been a competitive person. To wrestle in the Big Ten, and dare I say wrestling across the country, especially you know at the Division One level, you're going to find guys that, that are good wrestlers, state champs, but then there's those guys with that element of um, what's well, a tough edge. You're, you, you've you been described many times as being a guy with a tough edge uh, and a toughness to your style. Uh, is that something you developed, or were you a grinder early on? Uh, I feel like um, I'd like call it grit, but I've always had that, that sense of grit to me. Um, I remember when I was little, uh, my dad told me, he says, I don't care if you win or lose, it's just you always got to try your best. And so, you know, every second of every match, I was always trying to score, and so... Uh, you know, the, that just carried over my whole career. Jake Suflon joins us, a uh, new volunteer assistant coach for the Purdue Boilermakers in West Lafayette, Indiana. Uh, as a, a new guy on campus, uh, can you can you break down how the, the hiring process uh, worked? Um, <laughs> uh, I, I just had kind of talked to Ursuline after uh, Nationals and and we had kind of put it in play, but um, otherwise I really don't have too many specific details. What well, did you visit the campus? Nope. <laughs> did you have, and since you've been there, what, about a week now? Uh, yeah, yeah. I'd, I'd come out here and wrestled, though, uh, a couple times, you know, for Big Tens one year, uh, and we had a duel here as well. So I I'm, I'm know the area, but I hadn't actually, like, uh, been able to wander around it too much. Is there a specific hamburger shop you are looking forward to eating at there in West Lafayette? No, uh, but if you have any suggestions, I'm open to listening to it. You know? I, isn't there a place there called Triple X? There is. There yeah. is, actually, yep. It's very tight space at the counters, but boy, I'll tell you what, once once they put that hamburger down in front of you, you really don't care. I'm surprised they haven't taken you there yet. Perhaps uh, Amanda Dahl. Uh, from the sports information director's uh, uh, position could could take you there one day and uh, buy you one of those uh, hot, delicious hamburgers from Triple X. Sounds like a good plan. Oh, buddy, it's good. I'm just telling you. All right, so let's get back to you and and the, the discipline it takes. Uh, I know you've got a great class coming in, and perhaps that's one of the uh, decisions that uh, Tony had to weigh out because he needs guys like you to help develop these new guys that are coming in and the, and the guys that are there from last year as well. But uh, this is this is a stellar class coming in. Yes, yeah, it is. And, uh, you know, I'm looking forward to working with them a lot. There's a lot of good talent coming in around the middleweights. And so, you know, it's kind of my area. And uh, I'm really looking forward to, to mentoring these kids and helping them grow. And that's part of it. You know, being a great coach is understanding, being that glue between the head coach and and the athletes, you're you're closer, uh, obviously, to their age than than uh, perhaps Coach Erzlin is. But this is a real big opportunity for these athletes to be able to learn from you. I mean, I want to go back to when at Nebraska you you were uh, uh, bestowed the Tom Osborne Citizenship Award. And for those folks that don't know about Tom Osborne, I'm going to ask you to Google search Tom Osborne and find out what an impact he's had on on America, let alone just Lincoln, Nebraska, and the Cornhuskers of Nebraska. Tom Osborne is the man. And to get that award meant what to you? I mean, Tom Osborne Citizenship Award. Uh, It was kind of a team thing. Um, A lot of the guys on the team received it, but, you know, we were just very active in the community and, uh, and, and doing whatever we could to help out. Now, I, I, I think perhaps you're underestimating your import on that because you were one of those honor roll guys, all uh, academic, all Big Ten. So academics was was important to you as well, right? Yeah, yeah, it was. Uh, you know, it's a student athlete, and you got to do both ends of the job. So in Wisconsin, did you did you? What were the choices when in Wisconsin? at Arrowhead uh, High School, what were your choices as an athlete as to where you were going to go? 
Uh, I was look. I mean, I, t- I took three visits. I went to uh, I would say Nebraska. I went to Minnesota and Wisconsin as well. And it and it boiled down to uh, Nebraska. So, kids that uh, are choosing these days, they're, they're and this this may be kind of a, a, a different question, but perhaps you've noticed that kids are making uh, verbals or or dedicating themselves to a program. Some as young as sophomores or even younger. In high school, are we starting too early to have kids commit uh, to a program, making an indication where they're going to go to school? I mean, if if you know where you want to go, you know where you want to go. Uh, I, I personally, I like to check places out. Obviously, I didn't hear uh, when I came here, but um, I like to check places out and see how I would fit there uh, first before we commit. Now, on the other hand, you, you're you're coming to work for a, a guy like Tony Erzland. Uh, he made his decision. I mean, you've always had a good relationship with Tony. And how long have you known him now? Six, seven years? Uh, about six years, yeah. Yeah. Okay. What about Zach Tanelli and and Tyrell Todd? You you know those guys pretty well. Uh, I'm getting to know them pretty well. Um, I I have watched both of them growing up, and uh, I just I think it's really cool to get to work with them now. Now your your area of study, if I recall, at Nebraska was. Um, there was concentrations in what communications and sociology, uh, sociology and psychology. Uh, okay. My major was journalism. Your major was journalism. Yeah. And 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 in journalism, people see themselves as a writer, a radio guy, or a TV guy. How do you see yourself? Uh, as as a wrestling coach. As, as with your degree in journalism. I have a degree in journalism too, but I never thought I'd get the opportunity to sit and talk with Jake Souflon via Skype. True. Um, I mean, I can I can write, uh, but I, I really don't want to pursue anything in those areas. What What do you want to pursue in the area of? Is there any pursuit in the area of of journalism? No. Well, when I first went to college, uh, I had thought of you know being like a reporter on the sidelines or you know covering sports or in some in some manner. And uh, about halfway through college, I was like, yeah, I don't think this is really for me. <laughs> so I just had to finish it up, and then, you know, I started coaching afterwards. So you manned up to the degree you were going after journalism. I like the idea that you, you put concentrations of psychology and sociology, and their social is always good to have, but psychology, uh, understanding the, the psychology of the game, I yeah. think that's uh, – that, that gives you a good foundation for coaching as well because if you can understand what's going on and help communicate that to the student athlete, I think that's the best. I really do. So you've got Tonelli, you've got Todd, and you've got Coach Ersland, and you kind of round out this, uh, this interesting group of coaches. I think Purdue is much stronger for having added you, uh, even though you didn't take a campus visit, as it were, before taking the job. <laughs> I think I think that's great. That's a, that's that's all trust in Coach Erslin. What about being able to stay within the Big Ten Conference? Uh, I mean, ever since I was little, I always dreamed about wrestling in the Big Ten Conference, and so it has been my favorite conference by far. And uh, I know when I was looking for jobs that I, I wanted to stay in the Big Ten if I could. And you know, uh, here I am. Yeah, it's, Big Ten is not getting any easier, is it? No, no, I love it. If anything, I think the Big Ten over the last uh, five years with the addition of Rutgers and Maryland has gotten only stronger. Uh, we're seeing Rutgers just rise up. They're like the bad boys of the East, the blue-collar bad boys of the East. Maryland yeah. is uh, making some additions to their coaching staff uh, as of late. But you see the Big Ten just absolutely rising above the balance of the country. Everybody else is maybe taking nips at the heels, but the Big Ten just doing what it does, and that's that's some hard uh, hard nose wrestling. Yeah, I know. Not only do we have the top end talent, but we also have a lot of depth. So I think it, it's the best conference all around. So when do you actually start working with the athletes, and and are there some already there? Uh, the athletes are here uh, right now, um, but I, I can't I can't physically work with them yet. I'm still uh, recovering from surgery. Talk talk to us about your surgery. What was done, and and what's the timeline on that? Uh, at, at the uh, NCAA tournament, I had torn my ACL, and so I had, had surgery a couple months ago, and I'm about halfway through it right now. Can you point to uh, where your ACL is? Yeah, 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 I know where it is. Okay, 
you want to show it on the camera or you want us to guess? Uh, I'll, I'll leave it for the, for the <laughs> people to guess. Where are you at competitively? Are you, are you done competing or do is perhaps will wrestling fans still get a treat and get to see you wrestle? Uh, I'm, I'm most likely I'm done. Um, I, I, I think I'm ready to be done with that. Done with the competition yep. side of it. That's hard for me to swallow, dude. You were fun to watch uh, as as a as an athlete at Nebraska, and and I know that you enjoyed the experience. What what do you take away from Nebraska other other than a degree, perhaps that you won't be using? Um, <laughs> <laughs> what do you what do you what do you take away from Mark Manning and and uh, Jordan Burroughs and and Green, all those guys? What do you take away from that experience? Uh, I mean, I learned I learned a lot from all those guys, and um, in, in addition to all that, I have great relationships with all of them. Uh, I've came over with a lot of friends, some family too from it, and so um, yeah, no, I, I I really enjoyed my time there, um, and and like I said, they taught me a lot about the sport, a lot about myself, and uh, I'm looking forward to helping the next generation of wrestlers. How old are you now? Uh, Twenty three. 23 years old and we don't get to 23 or 24 25 all by yourself there are other people that helped us along the way getting to where we are getting to a great coaching position such as you have now at purdue so who do you want to thank uh i mean my, my biggest supporters are my family uh you know they've they've helped me get to where i was uh at nebraska and then from there the, the coaching staff got me to here so um you know my family is is definitely the, the people i want to say thank you to most all right cool dude you've been a tremendous interview i appreciate that i'm looking forward to seeing you around the big 10 as you uh, continue your growth as a coach doing so with tony ears and is quite a treat uh yeah. west lafayette indiana that's where you're making your home now did you enjoy the nike hot seat today uh, I did, yeah. It wasn't. It wasn't too hot. I hope not. No, but. no. And so, sometimes it can be painful. You know, sometimes we throw <laughs> we throw high hard ones at guys. But uh, today, I think it was just kind of an exploration of Jake uh, Jake Suflan as a as a new coach and uh, a tremendous athlete. And Jake, on behalf of wrestling, I want to thank you for all you gave to the fans, not just in Nebraska, but the fans of the Big Ten and the fans of a uh, Division One wrestling. You you brought it when you were on the mat. People paid attention, and that's perhaps the greatest compliment we can give a, a wrestler is that you made us pay attention because you worked, and you worked hard. So thank you on behalf of the sport and all the fans of this sport, and I'm sure glad that you're still in it and uh, willing, able, and ready to, to give back by teaching the next generation. I appreciate it. I want to thank Amanda Dahl for helping to make this interview possible. Thank you, Amanda. She's uh, just been a tremendous asset for the sport and most uh, assuredly at Purdue uh, as the sports information director there. So for all of us at Takedown, thanks for listening. Thanks for watching this very special interview as Coach Tony Erslin, the head coach of the Boilermakers of Purdue, adds a, a strong, strong man to the lineup of coaches there, Jake Souflon, the uh, former Nebraska Cornhusker now. A boilermaker coach. Thanks, Jake. Thank you much.